So without further ado, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce the man of the evening, Mr. David Horowitz. I'm not running for president this year, so I'm not going to lie to you, and I'm not going to make promises I don't intend to keep. I think the first piece of business this evening is to look at what's happened in the last few weeks on this campus. Before you came here, there was a security sweep of the room. Um, as you will have noticed, there is significant security here, I'm told. that. Um, only one of the llamas had any security. Um, most speakers don't have to speak with security. I think it's disgraceful that an American campus, um, a speaker needs to come <clears throat> under protection. Um, I don't particularly like, uh, well I certainly did, it's unpleasant to have to walk into a situation where you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, and I uh, have, in the past, uh, at various times, dropped my security and then I get um, physically assaulted. And at my age, um, bones don't heal so easily. Um, and so I, I take the security. Uh, and also there's a lot of people dependent on me for making a living. So <clears throat> you should think about what this means for your campus. There is... Uh, well, they think it's funny, but um, this, this creates a climate, this creates a climate in which it's very difficult to discuss things in an intellectual, uh, rational fashion. You're the people who are paying for your education. This is the time in your life when you get to, or ought to get to hear different sides of issues and weigh them. Um, unfortunately, this has been accompanied um, by a campaign, this is a national campaign that the Muslim Students Association has or organized. I was just in Wisconsin where the, the university had metal detectors for students coming in. There were about 15 security and about 15 people had to be removed because they couldn't um, sit still. Um, first while I was talking and then while people were asking questions. Another aspect of this is the assault on the free press. Uh, that has taken place on this and other campuses, that wherever this ad has appeared, there has been an attempt to attack, or there have been attacks on the paper. The Daily Nexus was attacked for printing an ad. Now, one of the things about uh, essential components of a free press is that you have editors who are responsible, um, who check the facts in an ad, who ask for sources, um, before it's run. One of the things I noticed in all the controversy in the Daily Nexus is that none of the facts in the ad were challenged. Um, instead of responding in an intellectual way to the arguments in the ad, um, people uh, attempted to slander me and the ad itself and claim that the ad was attacking Muslims, which it wasn't. Um, and that the ad was accusing the MSA on this campus of being a terrorist organization, which it didn't. I found the most appalling fact in today's nexus that 80 of your professors attempted to intimidate the editors of the nexus by appealing to them not to print inflammatory ads, like there was something wrong uh, with a statement that is, uh, I guess, politically incorrect on this campus. That 80 professors would do this because, after all, many of the students who work on the Nexus are, are students at this university and students and these professors it is appalling. But this is the situation <clears throat> in our country today. And the attacks on free speech and the attacks on <coughs> free press are coming from the political left. You don't find conservative students uh, obstructing. Uh, speeches and having to be thrown out uh, of, of lectures that are given. I organized 
an Islamo-Fascism Awareness Week last October. And I did so because what is happening on campuses is happening in our culture as well. The President of the United States used the term Islamo-Fascism to describe our enemies one time and was attacked by the Council on American Islamic Relations. Hold on, hold on, we had a comedy show. Let me, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, This is, some, this is somebody who can't handle the truth, I guess. There's going to be a question and answer period. I often find that the people who obstruct during the speech are incapable of putting uh, a thought together in a coherent sentence when it comes to the question and answer time. There's an embargo on certain kinds of speech in this country. It's not just speech codes, but nobody wants to be called a racist. Nobody wants to be called an Islamophobe or a homophobe or a sexist. And uh, you've all experienced this. You, you walk on eggshells around certain issues. Um, this is quite new in this country, uh, quite recent, although it's now probably 20 years old. Um, so I decided to hold a, a week called Islamofascism Awareness Week. And I made the theme of the week the defense of Muslim women against the oppression, their oppression in um, fundamentalist Islamic countries like Iran uh, and Afghanistan under the Taliban. And my poster for the week was a woman, a Muslim woman in Muslim a head scarf, um, having her head blown off with an AK-47 by a Taliban soldier on a soccer field in Afghanistan. The soccer field had been given to Afghanistan by the United States, which is, when all is said and done, the most generous country in the world. And the reporter <clears throat> who watched this execution, a woman was being executed because somebody accused her of fornication, of having uh, illicit sexual relations. And if there had been a trial, because she's a woman, under Sharia law, uh, she wouldn't have been able to testify in her own behalf. Uh, if she had been raped, she would have had to find four male witnesses who would testify in her defense, and if she couldn't find them, then she would be a criminal. That's called the oppression of women. Uh, the reporter asked the Taliban soldier, why are you doing this on the soccer field? And the reply was, well, if the Americans would give us a proper execution place, we would play soccer on the soccer field. That is our enemy. Yes, this is a movement within Islam. No, it is not all of Islam. But if you look at the um, surveys that have been done by Al Jazeera and others, the minimum number of Muslims who are said to consider Osama bin Laden a hero is 10%. That's 150 million people. The larger figures are 50%, which would be 750 million people. We have a serious problem in the world in fanatical Islamic terrorists. And the fountainhead of the of these doctrines and I, let me just say